it would be best to view this discussion only if either number one, you already have a brief background, a crude background on the pharmacokinetic processes. Or if you don't, uh, maybe you have already watched my video showing this, uh, these drawings on the left side because it's uh, an overview of those four, which include absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. Now, if you're good to go with that, then let's proceed because this is just a short discussion. Simply, I'm going to describe what we often read in textbooks as pharmacokinetic plots. And really, most of the time, those are plots where in time is at the x-axis and the drug concentration, usually when we say concentration, it is the uh, blood or the plasma concentration. So I'm just going to clarify that here on the y-axis. Okay? And we really need to put the concentration on the y-axis because, again, there's this idea that we have established from previous introductory videos that the amount of drug that gets into your body, specifically the organ where you want some kind of beneficial effect to happen, would be also uh, related to how much drug there is. Basically, the more of the drug there is, we can assume that in many times the effect would also go up. Okay. And therefore, in this plot, we will see that there's this kind of broken line which denotes the so called MEC or the minimum effective concentration. Meaning, if it is the minimum, you cannot go below this, otherwise, you won't have any effect. So, in other words, there is actually a certain amount of drug in the blood for, and this depends really on the type of drug being given. This is something that has to be determined by hard science, really uh, rigorous experiments. So usually when there's a pharmacokinetic plot, the MEC is just plotted there, it's a given. So anything below that established MEC is not gonna do anything to the patient, as in not gonna give any benefit to them, okay? And if there's a minimum effective concentration, there is also a minimum toxic concentration. We have already discussed this in pharmacodynamics that usually the toxic dose is much higher than the effective dose. As uh, one of our historical figures said, Paracelsus, he said that the dose makes the poison. And usually that dose is much higher than the effective dose or the effective concentration. And therefore, it's like saying that we want to play around a certain range from here to here, wherein we just want the drug concentration to stay within that area. Go below it, the drug will have no effect. Go beyond it, which is somewhere here, right? It would be toxic, which of course, we don't want either no effect or toxic effect. We just want the beneficial. And so we can also try to relate the plot here, the yellow curve, to what's actually happening in the body, okay? So first, we have to remember that at the start, when you take a certain medication, and let's just go back again to the common route, which is the gastrointestinal route, we are first looking at the site of administration. And this is going to reflect as zero because remember, we are measuring plasma concentration on the y-axis. So if your drug is initially somewhere else and not inside the blood, then it should make sense that at time zero, at the beginning of the plot, you should also have zero plasma concentration for the drug. Only when the drug molecules go inside by, via the process of absorption, will we slowly see an increase here. Actually, it's, it depends whether it's slow or fast, depending on the dosage form. That is not part of our discussion in this recording. But this one, this rising part of a pharmacokinetic plot, reflects absorption. Of course, we should remember that our body will also take care of the drugs inside the blood, of, of, of the molecules inside the blood. Some of them will be sent to the liver and the kidney. And you know, this is only the primary organ. I've discussed this in previous recordings. Um, urine is not the only route. It could go in the biliary route. You can uh, sweat it out. It can go, the metabolites can go in your saliva. But the point is there will come a time that, well, for a very brief moment, both the absorption and uh, elimination processes will be equally powerful. 
But of course, there will come a time that all of the drug molecules in the site of administration will have been depleted because all of them would have moved here. And then, of course, uh, going with the flow, all of the drug molecules in the blood will eventually pass forward, be excreted um, after some time. So that means that it is inevitable that our plot will also observe a decline or it will go down until such time that all of the drug molecules have been released to the outside environment, all of it has exited your body, we're gonna go back to zero. So this is for a single dose. You took one tablet, you got, you know, you got one dose of a certain drug in a certain dosage form, this is what it would look like. And again, it's kind of saying that this part right here represents the absorption part. It's the dominant process here. And then the declining part is more of elimination. That's the more dominant part here. Now, before messing up everything and like making everything cluttered and all, let me also uh, note you of important terms that we use in pharmacy, which we can actually find in this plot. For example, you will notice that there's again a certain part of the plot wherein the concentration is not yet within the minimum effective. Meaning, during the time from here to here, if we trace it, right, this means that this is the time wherein you already took the medication, but it's still not doing anything because it hasn't reached the minimum effective concentration yet. And that is usually what we call, and uh, if you're uh, studying healthcare uh, sciences, you're probably going to hear this a lot, the onset of action, or sometimes you just call it the onset, okay? And this is usually the waiting time that we call. If uh, the onset of action for a certain painkiller is 30 minutes, that means upon taking some kind of painkiller, you'll have to wait for 30 minutes before the pain that you're experiencing will subside. It is inevitable, especially when you know that the side of administration is something except the blood. And you have to wait for the onset because that's like the waiting time for the drug molecules to get inside, right? And then by the time that you did reach this area, the effect will continue to take place in your body, okay, until it declines down again below the minimum effective concentration. So meaning it's from here until here that we find some relief or some kind of beneficial effect from what we just took. Can I use a different color? It's a little dark for me. Yeah, and uh, this one, is now what we call the duration of action or the DOA. And it's almost self-explanatory. Essentially, this is the amount of time wherein the drug is actually doing something, okay? And then uh, there's no term anymore for the time wherein the duration of action ends. This is basically the, the remaining time that the drug will reside before it goes out. But at this point, it's not really giving any beneficial effect anymore. In fact, a patient will not know that the drug is, is still in, that's still in their blood unless you actually take blood samples and you do some kind of chemical assay. Okay. Now, this is not to say that the only pharmacokinetic plots that you will be observing would look always like this. Of course, this is just for a single dose. So you can just imagine if we take multiple doses, then the plot can go up and then go down. And then if you take another dose, it will go up again. And then we get some kind of multiple, you know, mountains beside each other looking kind of plot, but that's not for our discussion right now. There's also a possibility that you have a pharmacokinetic plot wherein the peak is already at time zero and it will just go down over time. And of course, this might, you know, for anyone who is not yet familiar with this one, the question may be, is this possible? Well, you could probably assume the answer to that is yes, otherwise I wouldn't have drawn it. But of course, the follow-up question may be, what's the condition that will allow this plot to exist? Well, if you remember, I did mention a while ago that the rising part of a pharmacokinetic plot is pretty much the absorption phase. And there's none of that here. So maybe we can think of a route of administration wherein there is no process of absorption. And there is. Of course, that is the intravenous route. Why? Because if you have the IV route, that means that your drug will be injected straight to your blood. And that means that if the drug goes straight here, will there, will there still be the need for you to wait for the drug to enter in your blood? Of course, there is no need anymore because 
well, the drug already goes straight to it. So meaning that the absorption phase is ignored when you give a certain drug IV, and therefore, all you will be seeing is this declining part, which is like 